Hello there, you lovely lot. Welcome back to another fantastic show here on Crafters TV. It is all about launch day. Ooh, yeah, good ooing in the gallery. Uh, and it is with a brand new product that I know you're going to love. You love them, actually, in the earlier Wake Up Call, and they've been so busy since then. Uh, we'll get into exactly what you're getting in just a second, but more pressing matters. We need to find out who we're with for the next couple of hours. He is back. It's his Fifth our fifth show together in two yes. days. Craig or Bagel is back in the bakery. How are you, Craig? I'm doing very well, thank you so much. Rain to go for this launch day, which is all about the timeless borders. These are beautiful, these are dainty, these are elegant. These are ones that you are going to be using on many of your cards. We touched upon within Wake Up Call. They're going to be sitting at the side of my desk and a lot of your desks at home. But you've got the option to put little bits of your faux stitching in because you're going to find the pin pin prick dots all the way along. So, here we go. This is the one that we done within Wake Up Gorgeous. Call. So yes, there's a border on the edge, but because the dainty size of these ones here, although the length of them are 6.2 inches, they're going to be really good for the bottom of your card. They're going to be good for the border side of your card, but you're going to be able to use them at angles. You're going to be able to use them on box lids, all of which we're going to be doing over the next two hours. But then start to incorporate them with your acetate. You don't just have to use them in your cardstock format. You can then go and use your different mediums, but then go in and do your full back cards. What about incorporating it with some of your collections? So this one here with the dragonflies, how beautiful would that be with the dragonfly collection? Going bright, but what about going monochromatic? going with your blacks and your silvers. Very simplistic in a lot of the cards, but it's the edgeable border that's doing the shouting. Again, another one here, really, really quick, really, really simple, but it's a really effective way getting your inks in, changing the colours, just adding a little bit of highlight to the edges. Something along the same kind of lines we're going to be doing within our first demonstration with this one. And we'll also do a demonstration later on where what we've then done is created a little board effect within the card there. So whether you're going bright, whether you're going neutrals, whether you're going monochromatic, whether you're going big, whether you're going small, simple concept, you can absolutely do this. They really are a timeless design that you're going to be using throughout all the year. Even some of them you could be using at Christmas time as well with the yeah, foliage absolutely. effect. Uh, amazing and great they're eligible to do all those things with them. Right, uh, we will get into exactly what we get in a second but Oh, it is the season's Gemini. So I want to share with you some of the amazing Gemini deals we have got running at the moment. If you haven't been over to the website, do pop over there uh, and have a look because we've got promotions running all the time uh, at the moment. We've kicked it all off with the original Gemini, which I'll tell you about uh, in just a moment. We've got a brilliant mystery bag that everyone can go for. Really amazing. Uh, basically, you're getting the value uh, just in the alphabet. So everyone's going to be getting an alphabet. You will get a, a tunnel card. Uh, you're also going to get something from our stained glass window designs. We'll be sending you some double-sided dies and also some edgeables too. It's like a hero collection of all the kind of dies that you love. £30 or $40 down from over £100, over $125. So snap those up. Uh, it's running uh, for a few more days in this one until the 18th. So do grab those as if it lasts until the 18th, of course. Uh, we also have one for you soft crafters out there too. And these is excellent because you've got some of our most popular dies again in here. You will get two, not one, but two builder blocks, which is amazing. You will also get not one, but two of our incredible applique dies. I know, two. Uh, and the great thing is these are multimedia dies. So yes, you can cut your fabrics with them, but you can cut a whole host of other materials as well. Again, over a hundred pounds, almost a hundred and twenty dollars worth of value, looking at thirty pounds or forty dollars, which is excellent. Now, if you are thinking, I would actually love a new machine, wouldn't it be great if I could upgrade to this? on an amazing deal, then absolutely you can because uh, we've got promotions running over on the website. Go over there and have a look. Uh, our season of Gemini. This week's promotion is the large Gemini and it's coming with, it's 179.99, which is a standard price of Gemini, but look at that, over a hundred pounds worth of freebies if you snap it up right now. Make sure you've got the one that says Gemini machine with the free dies and embossing folders. That's how you're going to get over £100 worth of goodies included. Very, very busy on that. It is UK only. You can use your Club Inspired discount and you can also 
use clear pay. I will tell you that the box that you get with £100 of stuff in is slightly bigger than the box that is on top of the machine right there, it is fair to say. Lots of you tuning in and saying hi uh, this afternoon. We can see Rose in Delaware, Linda's in Maryland, uh, Eileen is in Puerto Rico, uh, Mary Pat is in Montana, we've also got Pam, uh, Gilmore, lots of you loving the borders. Uh, Gilmore loves how dainty they are. Colleen says their favorite is the Daisy border. Uh, and Monica says, good morning, everyone. My two favorite boys again. Oh, well, hello, Monica. Compliments will get you everywhere. Uh, right, let's have a look then. Let's dive in and see this brand new launch that we've got for you, because these are amazing. We called them the Timeless Border Collection. I think that's exactly what they are. There is nothing in the best possible way, there is nothing on trend in here. They are all things that are going to last indefinitely. And as long as you look after these, you're going to have them in your stash forever, really. You've got in here the Rose Garden, which is your first one. Really gorgeous. Then we also have this one, the Flourishing Foliage. Now, foliage is so important to have it on your project. So brilliant to be able to build it into the border of your project. You've got the butterflies. You just can't have too many schmetterlings as far as we're concerned. Then you've also got the Ditsy Daisy. Very, very cute. Uh, Craig demoed that in the earlier wake-up call. You can always go back and watch that demo back. We then have the Dancing Dragonflies, which are these ones just here. If you've gone for your dragonfly collection, then these would be a great addition to it. And we've also got Wildflowers there too, which is a really lovely one. 38, 35 or 47, 75 is what you are looking at to get the whole collection. Platinum members, 30, 68, 38, 20. If you want to place an order, it's so super simple to do so. Head on over to the website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com.eu. Hit that shop the show button or the shop the day button. You've got options and you will see all the products from the show or the day in there. Right, without further ado then, we best head on over to the Hottie Scotty and get on with it. Right, Teal, let's do that. Let's have a look. Let's start to use these in a very simple form. Make a very lovely but simple card here. We're going to use our multi-purpose card. We're also going to use a little bit of uh, the Spring Fever cardstock that is in the 8x8 pad that you'll find on Shop the Day. And I am going to use a little bit of baby pink glitter. So if you got your glitter bundle from yesterday, we'll be able to use that. But what I've done here, Joe, is I've got a six by six card blank. What I'm just going to do is just burnish the edge a little bit better. And then we're going to bring in our die. So this one is named Butterflies. And that's because there's butterflies on it. So what we've got here, outside cut and edge, detail all cuts. But then what we've then got is your opposite side. So that has no outside cut and edge, so it stays in place, but it's got the pin prick details. So what I'm going to do with this one here is, this back layer, we are going to cut right towards the right hand side, but then on the top layer, what I want to do, and I'm going to use my glass mat and my pencil, I'm going to draw a little line at the four inches, so I'm doing four inches from the left, and this is just as a little guide for myself. So doing a little pencil line. And then what we can then do is we can come in with our actual die. So I'm then going to come in into this one here. And I'm actually going to pop the actual edge of the die. So not the edge with the little pin pricks, but the actual cutting edge up to that four inch mark that I've already created with my pencil line. And we can then use our low tack tape. So what we're going to do is we're going to straighten it up. So using my glass mat as a helping aid. And then I'm going to pop my tape on here, here. I'm going to open it up and then I'm going to run it through. So I'm using our large Gemini because we're highlighting, of course, the original Gemini this week. But with this card size, because it is six by six, you'd be able to do what I'm doing with our Gemini Junior or even our MIDI if you wanted to. Fabulous. Line them up run that one through so that's going to cut one panel and then what we can do is then we can then move that die to that back panel and create a double edge at the opposite side uh may zing very busy on these already they were very busy in the master class earlier they continue to be very busy now as well borders and edge i think what's brilliant about these craig is you know when your project sees that little something more yeah these are great there's lots of projects that are brilliant that are sort of using these you know multiple times that they are the main focal point but they're just great accessory. They're going to complement a lot of different collections you already own. They really are, and that's a really, really good point to put. They are going to complement, 
many of your collections because the title is, of course, timeless. And they will be able to be used in conjunction with your other collections, whether you're using the one with the dragonfly, whether you're using this with the butterfly, or maybe you want to come in with your nature garden, your woodland animals, and use the foliage dye. You can do that. You can use these with many of your collections, which is the good thing. You don't just have to use them with plain cardstock. So now that we have done our top layer that we can see here, how beautiful is that? Is that? And you've got your little dainty butterflies. So you've got some that's got the detail, but then you've even got tiny, tiny little ones just hidden at the back there, Joe. And these pinprick details, what you can do with them is either um, thread some ribbon through them, or you can go in, and we'll do it later on with some of the demos, go in with a fine liner and then just join them up. Nice. So it's like faux stitch in effect. So you can do that with them as well. But now we've done our top layer, we can take our die once again, and then what we're going to do is we're going to run that one to the right-hand side. So similar to before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my glass mat as a helping aid to line it up, but then we can then get it into position popping the tape on the right-hand side, because that's the side that technically is going to be wasted. So it doesn't matter if there's a little bit too much pressure on your Gemini and it takes a couple of fibre layers off your card, because that is going to be the waste. And we're going to run that one through again, and then we can start to decorate it. Amazing. Make sure as well, if you are going for these, I would say get the big bundle. I think they're so craftable, you're going to absolutely love all the different designs. If you do want to get them individually, they are available individually, but they're also on a two for £14 or $18. you got all the options, Craig. All the options. And we were talking about that when it came to Wake Up Call and the Dragonfly collection. What we'll love to do is get for you options. Maybe you like the full collection, you want to go for it. Maybe there's only a couple that you like. Maybe your pennies at the moment can't reach for the full collection, but you do want to cherry pick your own. It's about options there, and you're still going to get your discount either way. The best discount is always going to come within the big bundle, of course. Absolutely. But at least you still get your Club Inspire if you're only wanting to cherry pick a few. But then all that we need to do is we just need to go in. If your die's not quite gone to the edge, just snip it away. And then what we are left with is our two-layer border that we can see here. So alternative, alternatively, this could just be one layer, Joe. Really nice card blank with the edgeable on the side, and that's you done. But we're just finishing it off a little bit more. And I'm going to go in with the pink here. As I said at the start, this is from the Spring Fever 8x8 card block. And we're going to go in. You use your own choice of adhesive. I'm going to go in with my tape. And what I've done is I've matte and layered it, just in case anyone wants to know. It's four and a half by five and three quarters. No additional mats and layers other than this one, because I'm wanting this first demo to be uh, quite simple, but maybe just one step further than uh, very, very simple, you know, okay. by doing the two steps. Because I know many of you, if it is the first card that you're making, you would be able to create this one, no problem whatsoever. And then what we can do is we can go in with our panel mats and layers here. So I just wanted to check, I've got my size right, which I have done. And what I'm away to do is, on the back of this pattern paper, Joe, I've used my double-sided tape. And you know, I, I say this quite a lot to let you know, if you are using a dry adhesive onto a surface such as Shedless Glitter Card, I like to just go over it with my tacky glue. Because over time, potentially, there may be a chance that your cardstock layer will jump off because of there's nothing really gripping mm. the double sided I guess is it because it's coated like it can't like get a good grab exactly. on it. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas your tacky glue that's then going to seep into the fibres of your cardstock and into the grains of the shedless glitter card. Brilliant. So we can go in and add this one. So I'm going to take this one onto the front and then what I'm wanting to do I don't want to just leave that as it is. I want to put something to the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to go in with another piece of our glitter card. So I've cut this to six by six as well. Now you could, if you want to, do mats and layers. That's entirely up to yourself. But what I want to do is I want to pop that one onto the back. So what that's going to do, it's going to strengthen that back layer. So our front layer is going to sit just perfectly and you've got that strength. But what it's doing, it's giving you that backing 
on that glitter. What I don't want to do, though, is I don't want to attach all of my butterflies to the glitter card. See how, you can just see how I can run my thumb, uh, my thumb, my pinky underneath there. That's what I want. I want to create that sort of movement, that kind of flexibility when it comes to the dimension. I think with your projects as well, the more texture you can build into them, the more interest they have, which ultimately exactly. means that um, they're more effective, aren't they? They are, you know, and think of who you're giving it to. And, you know, if you're giving it to someone that's maybe a little bit um, sight impaired, you know, you're wanting that touchy-feely aspect to the card. And that's what this is going to do as well. Not only having the shedless glitter, but by creating this border that's not fully stuck down to your card layer, you're able to get your fingers underneath, have a feel of it, get to feel the quality of the card, of course. But what we can do is matte and layer that. I'm going to open this one so I can see. So right to the bottom corner, we can pop that on all the way down. I would have, and I should have, added my bit of tacky glue, but hey-ho. Touched it now. Press that in. So what I'm still getting is the movement from the butterflies at the side. If you want to pop them flat, you can do. That's up to you. We can close it over. Then all that I've done is I've gone in with my vintage butterflies, I've taken one of these tags. Do you know what you could do as well, if you so wanted to, was go in with your actual tag punch. That would be a really good idea to go in with your tag punch. So let's go in. I'll tell you what, do you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to move that out of the way. Let's go in with our, I'm going to cut it to two inches by, let's go two inches by three and a half. So this bit I am changing on the spot because I want to take my punch. You'll find this on our website or on Shop the Day, but I've cut it to two inches. Let's punch it. And then what we can do is let's just, I know, let's use one of the stamps that are in the set too. So instead of going with the one that I'd already pre-prepped, this is how we all work on the team. We sit at home, we prep all of our things, and then we come live, and then we think, hmm, I'm going to change that. Uh, I'm, go I'm going to go. Ooh. I'm, I'm going to go onto this tag here. Now, keep in mind, it's not going to be a tag for a present. It's going to go onto the card. This is for you, but I wish it was mine. Because I think many people will give this to the card, to the recipient, and think, wish I kept that. Kind of wish I kept that card for myself, actually. Wish, wish I'd uh, got myself one as well. I often do that. Is that what you do? I quite, I, I've been known quite often to buy something for someone, and then it doesn't Keep never it for make yourself. It. Yeah. 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 Uh, things like sort of bath bombs and smelly stuff, so I do that with all the time. Oh, I get that for so and so. And then you keep it for yourself. Done. I used, Finish. I used to do that for, um, uh, what do you call it? Sorry, I'm just getting my alcohol proof ink pad. I used to do that with some of the candles, the yeah. branded candles. Um, I think the, the, the failure is here, buying, buying things for people that you like yourself. Yes, exactly. That's why you buy them in the first place, people, but then you want to keep them. Exactly. Uh, Lynn says, sorry, I'm a bit late. I had to make a phone call. I'd, well, I mean, I'm glad you're here now, Lynn. You haven't missed too much. No, not all at all. Right. Not missed. I was going to ask you, Lynn, to be on the phone too, but I realised it's probably a little bit nosy. <laughs> maybe just yeah, a little bit. Yeah, maybe a bit personal. <laughs> I'm going to say, that just in that year a minute ago, I heard George asking me a question about the car. What was that, George? In general, will I make... Okay, yeah. Mm. I tried to, George. Good question. George is asking, do I make my own cards for um, my family and friends' birthdays and Christmases and that? Uh, birthdays, absolutely, I do. Christmas time, I do. This sounds, this sounds quite horrible, but to my really, really close family because I don't have time to make loads and loads and loads. So birthdays is a yes, I do and Christmases for my very, very, very close family, I do as well. My mum used to send so many Christmas cards, Craig. I know. I remember we had one entire wall at home. She would blue tap them all up, or she'd use something to stick them all up on the wall. And I remember one entire wall of Christmas cards that she'd receive from people. Really? And then she'd only send them, then you'd only send them back to the people that sent them the year before. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I've heard of people keep, that do keep that. Keep the Christmas yeah. cards that you got sent this, you get sent that year, put them away, and then you know who to send one back to the next year when you go back through. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's a good idea, good. isn't it? Um, bef 
before I um, started to work here, absolutely, I used to bake cards for everyone. Mm. And then when I worked in food retail, I used to make cards for all of my colleagues. And then predominantly, it was the guys that I would just find them just on the floor in the changing rooms. Oh, not acceptable, Craig. And I was like, that's fine. I know what's happening next year. And uh, the ones that I would find just lying about the changing rooms, uh, they never got a handmade card the next year or the year mm. after. Serves yeah. them right. Uh, we're just talking about as well, hanging your cards on string. That was a thing that we used to do back yeah, in the day. Yeah, used to it? do it, yeah. From one corner of the room to the other. Yeah, look how them popular all on. you were, eh? All the cards. I, I, I like that. I like that. Just saying in our ear about, uh, what was that, a card off? A card How, off, you yeah. know, um, Who would get the most cards? Who would get the most cards? Yeah, Calling in that. every week, checking in, seeing how many cards you've been sent. Yeah, you Sounds like a very competitive household to me, Craig. It, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it really does. does. Uh, Bev says, I hope they're going to have more sentiments for the tag set. I don't see why not. I don't see also, why not. Also, you know, nothing to stop you bringing in your own tags. Or your own, sorry, your own sentiments as well. You know, think about the amount of stamps that you have that fit inside yes. the area of that stamp. Absolutely loads, There's I loads. Would imagine. Loads There's, and loads and loads. It really is. There's so many of your quirky sentiments, Joe, that are going to fit on your tag as well. So give them a shot because they are going to fit, as you said, many of them will, so go for it. All, what's the worst that's going to happen? All you're going to waste is a tiny, tiny little bit of cardstock, but other than that, no, go for it. These Try it. These gems are cute, Craig. Not only, sorry? These the, gems are cute. Ge gems. I am still working and twisting the arm of Don Bibby. These are hers. So I know that she is working hard to bring them to us when- Who uh, is, sorry, Craig? Don Bibby. Ah, fabulous. When uh, her name on the schedule somewhere, so stay year. tuned. I don't think she's. Uh, it's, it's not that, that long. Very soon. Not that long at all. But there we go. So I just wanted to change it slightly um, off the hoof because I thought I'd add. And by the way, you can see that I always use my uh, portable craft bag. But there we go. So using it. This is for you, but I wish it was mine because I believe it's one of those cards that maybe you would give it to your recipient and think, gosh darn, I wish I kept it from myself. It's but amazing. a really simplistic card to start off with. Keep it even simpler if you want by just doing the one side and then by having that additional layer of the glitter at the back, it's a nice professional edge. Go in right in the middle or you can, of course, write on the back. That's up to you. But there we go. That one is using the butterflies. Really, really awesome. And just shows you, you know, how beautiful these dies are. There for you know, you don't need too much going on. I'll quickly recap for you what you're getting then in there. You're going to get the gorgeous roses. You've got the foliage. This one here is the butterflies. You've got the daisies the dragonflies and the wildflowers. Most people going for that whole collection. They are, however, on a two for 14 pounds at $18 if you would like to get them like that. A couple of different card stocks to tell you about. Uh, let's start off with the Hint of collection. So this is our Centura Pearl. Uh, this one here is the a Hint of Silver that you've got. It is a glorious card stock. It really is. It's got an amazing, do you know what it reminds me of, Craig? like whipped mar like um you know when you make meringues yeah. you know you whip the egg whites up and they're like glossy aren't they yes. yeah, with all the sugar in them that's what it reminds me of this hint of silver it's got a really lovely finish to it a 310 gsm which is amazing a4 you don't only get the hint of silver you also receive as well the hint of gold which is brilliant so i'd say these are core card stocks that you need to have in your stash definitely worth stocking up on them whilst they're on a, a buy one get one half price which is amazing uh, i'm hearing that you're multi-ordering on those as well let me also share another deal with you it is our spring fever eight by eights that we've got here so you're going to get the patterned papers within there some really lovely color tones and a really nice variation of design so I think if you are maybe building your stash, this is a great one to have because it's got lots of different options in there for you. You've got 35% off of this, which is brilliant. You will also get 32 sheets then as well of the card stock. What's the GSM on that? It says it's 240, but it feels, I mean, it obviously is 240, but it really feels quite substantial, that one, in colours that will perfectly match and complement the pattern papers. So if... Um, 
if putting together mats and layers and like what works together is your maybe tricky for you these are brilliant because you've got your mats and your layers in one there 14.93 or 18.13 that's over 35 percent that you are saving there um <laughs> Just uh, not sure. Oh, oh hang on. I'll, I'll need to proofread that one first. I think it's what I'm using. I use red and green twine. Red and green. Uh, I use red and green twine at Christmas to hang Christmas cards all over our pantry. Um, says uh, says Pam E. Guests always go and look at them. I do love that. Uh, Val says, uh, hi, Craig I'm late. So I was reading Sarah's book and I misjudged the time. It's a great read. Val in Southampton. Not just Val in Southampton that thinks it's a great read. Massive congratulations, Sarah. Number five in the Sunday Times bestseller list. Fifth best-selling book in the country. Uh, in the last week she's going to be at I'm sh I know she posted about it uh, on her social media she must be absolutely over the moon um, so Alice says most of the cards I make I end up keeping since I'm relatively new to this hmm I wonder what stops you giving them away Alison do you know what though you don't need an excuse to make anything do you because you don't if you want to make something for the sake of making it then you do mm -hmm. that and you the thing do is you. you will always come across an occasion where you think gosh, I need a card, and you don't have time to make one. I know that, you know, we show you every now and again really, really quick cards you can do, but it's always nice to have that um, backlog of cards that you've got that you can then give out at the last minute. So whether you're going away, for instance, prime example, with me going to, to Scotland for just a couple of days, uh, I've got cards that I've made and I've just got there sitting, so I can write them all out and then I can take them with me for my friends and families that's got some birthdays over the next few weeks. So it's nice just to have uh, for those occasions when you need them. So yeah, but as you were saying, it's nice just to make them. Yes, and you've got them. Absolutely. Any questions you've got about anything in the show, you know how to get them into me. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion over on YouTube. Which one would you like to take us through next, Craig? Right, we're going to go in now with the dainty daisies here. Okay, doc. And I know in life, whenever we show things, we should always say, I shouldn't have a favourite. But I do. And I've got to say, I think oh, this dainty Craig, did you not clear your diet? daisy, not oh, from before, no. You little tinker. I know. No, I know. Bad. Shocking after me saying about someone uh, the other day. After we just blamed Debbie Robinson the other day for all of them. I know. Although it was just the tiny, tiny just little dots. We'll let you off. I mean, other, off. other people wouldn't have let you off, but no, I'm very generous, off. Craig. I will let you off. Thanks, Joe. I know you I don't you know what would happen if off. I didn't let you off, but anyway. Nothing, bye -bye. really. I would just Nothing. be... Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Six inches by six and a quarter inches. And what I've done is I've scored at the top at a quarter quarter of an inch. Now what I'm going to do with this one is we're going to go in with our daisies towards the left hand side. So let's come in with our low tack tape and then I'm going to use my glass mat as a helping aid to line up. So I'm going to go and follow all the way down. So what we can do is work our way up at the top. So if we get that, get it lined up. So I'm just making sure my die is right to the edge, the best it can be. And then what I'm going to do is tape. So this is, this is another one that you would be able to do with your smaller die cut machines, i.e. your junior. Feed that one through. So that's going to be on one side. What we're then going to do again is do it on the other side. But we are going to do some inking. Now, when it comes to the inking, you could have inked the edge of the cardstock first of all, then die cut up. And that's an easy way to do it if you want to avoid from uh, blending onto the die cut area and then you start to then maybe like rip off any of the little swirls or take away any of the little bit of the petals. Squirrels. Swirls. Squirrels. Squirrels. Swirls uh, and squirrels. There was a video on Instagram the other day of a guy that found a squirrel, a baby squirrel on his way home from the supermarket, Craig, so he didn't know what to do. So he fed it some chicken. Uh, and then it jumped on his shoulder and he ended up taking it home and to the gym with him. Really? It's like now his little mate pet squirrel, yeah. Oh. How, how awesome is that? Do you know, also, baby squirrels, they're just like small big squirrels. Are they? Yeah, they don't look any different when they're babies. Oh. You would have thought there would have been, you, wouldn't you? Mm. You would have thought there would have been a difference. Clearly not, though, eh? Imagine having a pet oh. squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you didn't see, did you? No. 
I'm so sorry. Do you want me to show you what happened? I, just, yeah. I looked down here. Do you realize the I did this and I scratch you like a chimpanzee. <laughs> like in a way, I just didn't look. What, right? Yeah, what? As in you, you had a genuine out? That's what I did, yeah. So you had an out. I didn't realize I was in the box, I just sort of did this. <laughs> Got you. Oh, I'm so sorry at home. Honestly. I did, I did wonder, I thought, I've never done anything here. I don't think I've done anything. I started talking, I think the squirrels started making me a bit itchy. A bit itchy. I, I am sorry, Craig. That's all right. <laughs> so, when you have an itch, you've just got to scratch. <laughs> it, just, it was hilarious how high I raised my arm. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, oh, these, things, anyway. these things happen. You've just got to uh, scratch that itch. Sometimes when the windy pops just appear out of nowhere, they just appear. <laughs> yeah, Craig burped in my face in the earlier show, is what we we didn't tell you. That's why we were a bit giggly earlier. Yeah, just just a little bit. I was unaware. It really did take me by surprise. <laughs> yeah. It was how close you were to my face. You were probably only about sort of five or six inches away at the time. <laughs> <laughs> just drank um, that certain energy drink as well. Just windy before, pops, yeah. yeah. Oh dear. We're all friends here. We are indeed. We are indeed. Gosh. Yeah. The stories we could tell in our autobiographies, eh? One, you should always, uh, May West said, you should always keep a diary because one day it might keep you. That's, that's good. Mm. That is really good advice. What would, would, would you have any juicy info for that to put in a autobiography, would you? No, I don't think so. No? God, okay. Not sure. Not sure. So that's a yes. Would you? Yeah, I think I could have a few juicy... I think mean, you've had quite an interesting life, so, um, you know, never say never. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd only be... Oh, you sell four copies, you'd buy one. My mum would buy one. Yeah. Um, I'd have to give the other two away. Mine... My, I, I can't... That sounds bad when I say I've had a boring life. Of course I've not had a boring life. I don't mean it that way. But my autobiography, that would be mostly based around the NHS and hospital trips mm. and the, the Crohn's disease, that sort of thing. That's what mine would be about. You know, I'm not one for lots of holidays or that because I'd been unwell. Whereas you've mm. done travelling and... Mine would just be about, you know, generally how fabulous I am, I think, Craig. That would be the, <laughs> the general theme of mine. That would be the oh. title. I'm fabulous. Yeah, I'm fabulous. And I love Eurovision. Uh, <laughs> It would be a lot about Eurovision, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> oh, 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 chapter do, six to twenty. Yeah. Oh, 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 do the funky gibbon is what Lillian's put. I think that's uh, with my scratching escapades. Um, Alison says, Joe, when you go to a store like Aldi's, she's put, uh, and the nice cards are one dollar fifty, I always end up thinking the person I'm planning on mailing a homemade card to isn't worthy of my masterpiece. <laughs> my mum and kids and husband love the cards I made for them, but laugh that I can't let go of the others. That there does happen. Keep a hold of them if they make you happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so ask for them back. Ask That's for a great back. idea. Imagine that, because do you know what? I bet you'd rather have them back if someone was going to get rid of them. Of course I would. Absolutely, of course I would. I'm very fortunate that those that I have given really, really special cards to do keep them. And then what's, what's lovely as well, because now living down here and, you know, work so much, and I always say work loosely because you can never class this as work, but if uh, any of my friends or family would message me and say, oh, Craig, I've got so-and-so, so-and-so friend that's just had a baby, that would you have time to make a card? I was like, yeah, of course I will. Um, what's lovely is if I don't know them, know that person that's just had the baby, you know, a couple of weeks down the line, I'll get a message from them saying, uh, hi, so-and-so, so-and-so gave me one of your handmade cards for the birth of our son or daughter. Just want to let you know that uh, it was absolutely beautiful and it goes into their keepsake box. Oh, that's when they're lovely. Older. That is, that's really, really lovely. I'm very fortunate that, you know, I've had quite a few messages over the years like that, and that's a really lovely feeling to know. Do you put, like, a little sticker or something on your... Yes. So I put a handmade sticker by, and it has my email address, and it also has my Crafters Companion Facebook page. Oh, amazing. So, yeah, I always do that. That's one, one bit of advice I would say. If you are making and selling your cards, or even if you're just making to give away, get some handmade 
stickers or a handmade stamp, something like that. Can you have like little personalised stamps made? Kush can. With like your details on them, even if you've just got you know, your name and your Instagram handle on yeah. them or something like that. Yeah. Good to have. Are you, you can do. Yeah, you, you can do. Um, there is, say, I know on the, although craft industry, you know, we are uh, friends with so many, but all that I would say, because I can't say the names live on air, but yes, there is, um, and there's some companies, there's small, really, some really, really nice small independent companies that do personalised stamps. Mm. So I would just have a look online, so yeah, there is, and that's a nice thing to do as well. Really, really nice. It's the florals in this collection that are people's favourites, Craig. That surprises me. Does I it? thought the butterfly would be in the favourites. Did you think so, yeah? Uh, yeah, the, the ditsies and the, the ditsy daisies and the wild flowers are your two favourites. As it is Eurovision week, Craig, I keep wanting to burst out into wild dancers every time I say wild flowers. Do you? Which was a Eurovision winning song for the Ukraine, yeah, by Ruslana. Just thought I'd slip that in there for can, you. Can um, I say, re remember hearing that one? Didn't see that one. No. Uh, it's a good song. You should check it out. Uh, what I would say is if you can get two for £14 or $18 on these, if you so wish. But best way to get the best value, of course, as always, is in that main collection. Uh, are they the water reactives you're using there, Craig? It is indeed, yeah. So what I've done within that first panel that I cut with my score line, I've gone on to the left and the right side, right side edge with the daisies, and I've used Honeypot water reactive. Then with this centre panel, what I've done, cut it to two and a half by six inches, and I've gone on very, very roughly with my honey pot once again, and just spritzed some water onto my card. You can either spritz direct, or as I like to do, go into my fingers, then flick, so you get more of your open page. What we can then do is, I don't have, uh, we've run out of kitchen roll here, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to take that excess off on the back of this card, and I'm going to take away. And because I've done it really, really quite subtly, but you'll start to see you get that full bleaching effect. There we go, we can see it here. Now, if you really, really went in deep with your colours, look at that. So whether you want to go subtle or whether you want to go really, really uh, strong, you can do. So all that I'm going to do now is let's come in, take that excess off, same with the water. We're going to come in with our back layer, which is six by six. And then I'm going to come in with this layer that I've done. I'm going to go in with my red liner tape. And then what I'm going to do is take this off. And then we're going to pop that into the center. So centralize that one into the middle. And then we can then fold that over. What you could do is if you've got A3 cardstock, you could simply, or in actual fact, if you've got 12 by 12, you could cut it to 6 inches by 12 inches, or if you've got a cardstock that's 6 by 12, you could do this without having that join. Um, I've done written in pencil back, just to remind myself that that is, of course, the back. Come along with a matte and layer afterwards. But then what I'm going to do to separate it, piece of our white stamping card, we're going to go on to the back with our tape. And what I've already done, so we can finish it off, is I've gone in with our sentiment dies. We've gone, friends like you are far too few, which is so, so true. And that is a genuine phrase that would uh, apply to you, Joe. Ah, oh, thank you. Um, we did, I did this for the first time uh, earlier this week, last week, I think. They're a cool sentiment, aren't they? They're really nice cool. To use on the, I would like to see these used on the inside of a card as well. You could it's do. different having a die cut sort of um, verse on the inside. Absolutely. You know, you could do. You could use them on the front like I'm going to. You could use them on the inside if you want to. But you could even just pop them in a little frame if you want. You can use it at the bottom of a scrapbook page. Really, really nice to use them in these different ways. But what we are going to do is let's go in with my tacky glue once again. And I cut this into our black mat and then our white multi-purpose card. So we're creating that drop shadow. And although this demo demonstration or this show isn't about these, these dies that I'm using now, the sentiments, I do want this sentiment to be the focal point, hence why I've cut it in black. And then the border dies that we've used is that decoration detail at the edges. 
So we can then go in, add in that one on to the middle. So let's pop that as close to the middle as we can go. We can that pop black that mat does not make a lot of difference, doesn't it, Craig? It does. It really, really makes it really pop. does. And makes it really legible as well, having the black background. You're right, because you can struggle sometimes with sentiments. There's a reason sentiments tend to be a certain font, because, as you can see, you need the whole sentiment to join together. So for it to be readable, as silly as it sounds, it is really, really nice to have not just a sentiment, but a little verse that is readable and then what you're using is the border dies as that accent detail to finish it off so you'll find ways in which you can use the border dies as the main focal point that you'll see within some of the demo demos on this show however you might just want to use it for the accent detail of your card. I could come in with another layout with white here and that's where I can write my sentiment but I just wanted to cover up the workings. Last but by no means least, a little bit of organza ribbon. I'm going to go in with my glue gel. Let's pop that onto the back, up to the top to finish off and then there we go. And you could do that with any of the border dies but now using that one for the opposite edge. And where I've done that matting layer on the back, you could do that on the inside as well to finish it off. You could put vellum behind there, you could put acetate behind there, but really, really nice, bright, vibrant card using the uh, daisies, more specifically dainty daisies on both sides, going with gems, going with nouveau drops, whatever you like, or keep it very simple. Beautiful, absolutely stunning, uh, and lovely to see multiples of these used on a project too. Let me take you back through what you're getting in the full collection, if that's what you're going for. So you have the roses, you've also got the foliage in there, which is your flourishing foliage. These are the butterflies, you've got the ditzy daisy. This here is your dancing dragonflies, and you will also get the wild flowers under £40. £38.45 or £47.75 gets you all of that. Remember, if you are a Platinum, maybe you can see the Platinum price there on your screen, which is awesome. £30.68, £38.20. Um, they are available on a two for £14 or $18 if you would like to get them like that. Uh, very, very busy on that brand new launch. Loads more demonstrations still to come. Uh, in this show as well. So, uh, something else I want to tell you about, the Water Reactive ink pads that are available on the show. It's a 10-piece collection that you've got here. You've got Honey Pot, Plum Jam, Fuchsia, Spa Blue, Smoke Emerald, Frosty Jade, Midnight, Grasshopper, Crushed Velvet, and you've got the Pale Fig in there as well. You're saving £12.91. Essentially, you're getting two of these for free, which is awesome. Uh, grab those. Now, something that was very busy after we featured it in the earlier Wake Up Call is this. It is our Year of Craft Gift of Giving uh, with 265 elements, which is fantastic. There's absolutely loads in this one. I'm going to give you a quick... Oh, let me just get this out. Me and packaging, we always, uh, we always struggle, don't we? We're not friends. Uh, I'm going to open this up. It comes beautifully boxed for you. Now, if you have the original Year of Crafts, this is a great bolt-on. If you don't have the uh, original Year of Crafts, then fear not, because you can use this as a standalone. I'm going to open it up and show you what is in here. It is a beautiful box of goodies. You get this wonderful uh, booklet included. I say booklet, I mean, it's really substantial. And in here, what you've got are loads of different ideas on how you are going to use this particular box. Um, and you've also got stencils in here, as well, templates, I should say, inside there too. But lots of different things, more masculine projects. The projects take you all the way through the year. Then let's get into what you are getting in here. So you've got three different ribbon collections in there, which is absolutely awesome. So you'll get all of those. Uh, you've got a banner die, which is going to fit over the stamps that I'm going to take you through in a moment. And you've also got uh, an umbrella, a Wellington boo, and a um, and some raindrops in there too. These are your stamps. So you couldn't buy the stamps for this price. You absolutely could not. Lots of different ones in there for you. Embellishing stamps, focal points. You've got sentiments, friends forever, no matter what the weather. Love that. Happy birthday. I love you. Dance in the rain. Uh, you brighten my day. Then we also have these ones in here as well. 
These are a bit sort of foodie themed. They've got some, I uh, want it coffee, cake, tea, time, sweets, thank you. The banner that I looked at a minute ago, that die will fit over these as well, which is excellent. We then also have these. These are beautiful. Some really lovely little florals within there. The frame is just really lovely. I love that linear design that you've got there on the frame. Then we're also putting in a load of card blanks and envelopes for you too. So you've even got these within this particular box and that's going to allow you to start making your cards they're all come included we've got some stencils so you've got a lovely raindrop stencil and then we've also got templates in here now these templates are for boxes uh, and also for making mini albums lots of different size ones in here uh, these for your mini albums for the spines you've got uh, templates here too and projects included in the book which will allow you to use all of those templates which is excellent then we've also got these these are some uh, die cut tags for you so you've got multiple sheets of these you can see these just push out so you've got those they are all your die cut tags loads of those in there and then these ones here these are die cut sentiments for you so you've got a few pages there of your die cut sentiments too and then loads of paper which is excellent so you can see all your different colored cardstock here it's all double sided and then we've also got lots of patterned paper for you as well the value is unbelievable hey, do you know what? even the 34.99 or 39.95 the value was incredible but to get it on a half price deal if you are a platinum member 13.99 to pick all of that up is a sensational value i'm going to give you an opportunity to check out it's very very busy over on the website so whilst you do that why don't we share with you one of our quick buys take a look quick buy all your crafty must-haves in a flash Make light work of intricate and delicate die cutting designs with the Pokey Tool from Crafter's Companion. An absolute essential part of any paper crafter's kit, its precise tip has been designed to release the tiniest pieces to reveal your finished results with absolute precision. And to make sure your finished project is perfect, each Pokey Tool has a rubber tip protector, so there's no risk of damaging your die cutting design or yourself. The Crafter's Companion Pokey Tool is such an essential craft item, we've included two in each set. Quick Buy. Get yours now. Welcome to Club Inspire, the Crafter's Companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Very, very busy. Lots of you checking out there under that piece of video. Um, Patty says, what? My favourite duo twice this week. What a great week this makes. I'm liking this schedule. I'm glad we're, we aim to please, Patty. Um, Miriam says, I love the card of the sentiment. I really love the colours. Mar Maricel saying, I love the sentiment dies. Can't wait for mine to come in. I hope it'll be here in the next couple of days. This is a good point from Deb Craig, who says, I usually don't sign my cards for family. I put a post-it note inside uh, for personal sentiments. That way they can remove the note and re-gift them. That's a really good idea. It's a really idea. good idea, actually, isn't it? That is a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. so more than one person gets the joy of receiving your, mm -hmm. your project. Love that idea. Let's just whiz you back through then what's included in here. Remember, you can go for the whole collection or you can get them on a two for £14 or $18. You've got the Rose Garden. You also have the Flourishing Foliage, the Butterflies, Schmedlings. Uh, you've also got your Ditsy Daisies, the Dragonflies, and you get the Wild Flowers. The wildflowers and the ditzies are your favourite at the moment. They are so beautifully detailed. I really do love that embossing that you've got there on that border to 38, 35 or 47, 75. Gets you all of those today. Which one would you like to take us through next then, Craig? Right, we're going to go in with Rose Garden. 
So we're going to go in with Rose Garden. Once again, we're going to go back to six by six card, but we're going to uh, create a really nice decorative top to our card blank. We're going to then cut another one separate. So as you were saying in Wake Up Call Joe, which is absolutely correct, if you wanted to just cut the borders on little strips of cardstock or paper, you can do, in which they're going to go through your even smaller machines. But let's go in with the die set here. So what we're going to do is incorporate some of our acetate, which is our heavyweight acetate. So I'm going to go in. What we can then do is go straight up into the top of my card blank. So I'm going to go up to the fold of my card and then I don't need to use my glass mat to straighten this because I am just going to follow the actual fold. So I'm going to go in and then what we can do is we can tape it down. So if I bring my large plate in, another card that even though it's going to be a sizable card you would be able to do within your junior. So let's run that one through. And then what I'm going to do, just for a little bit of uh, speed and time, once it goes over that edge, I'm going to go in and hit pause. We're going to reverse it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I've got it in lengthways, it's quite hard for me to have that die at an angle because of the size of the card blank. So it's positioned right into the middle of my plate and it's right in the middle of my card blank. So giving it an extra reverse just means that you're going to be able to then get that perfect cut right throughout the middle. So then what we've got is we've got our base bit, which is technically all waste. And then what we've got here is where we've got the fold of our card is now got that beautiful detail. And if you wanted to, I'm using the same dies for both of them. But what you could do is you can mix and match. So this one, I've got the rose die for the separate pan on my way to do in a moment. You can take one of the other ones. So this is where you can mix and match. And then all that I'm going to do is let's get these little bits out. Could you imagine as well, Joe, popping a strip of your self-adhesive sheet on the back nice. and then start to use your flakes through mm -hmm. the center? Or what we're going to do with this one is because we're going to sandwich a little bit of acetate, you could go in and, as well, all know, because I've got a lot of patience, I could even go in and do little bits of paper piecing. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do that whole lot, mm. but what I could do is cherry pick sections out the rose heads and go in and do some paper piecing. So there is going to be the top of my card. Let's just give that an extra burnish. We can set that one to the side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take in a piece of this black card stock, black matte card, six inches by two inches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in right to the top. So I've got this little bit extra uh, depth at the bottom here. And this is going to enable me to have somewhere to pop my tape onto so I can attach it to my acetate. And then all that we need to do is go along tape it into place just so it doesn't move because I do want it to be completely straight and then we're going to feed this one through our Gemini. Pop that one in. You're going to do this twice. I've already done one of them so we're going to bring that one in as well as this one and in actual fact we're, in total we're going to do it three times. So twice in black, once in white card. So I've already done one in black and I've already done one in white card so we can take this one out the way so if your cardstock is left and just at the edge all you need to do is snip that out with your scissors take that out the way take away my low tack tape take that take that I'm just going to give it a quick clean while I remember so now we have got our three so we've got our two in black and our one in the white so when it comes to the base one what we can do is we can go in with one black, one white, and I'm going to go in with my tacky glue and I'm going to do a little bit of a drop shadow, Joe. Usually, we would tend to put the drop shadow with the dark tone at the back, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have the black at the front and the white. That's going to be my drop shadow. That's going to also create extra strength because we're going to pop some acetate at the back and this is the panel that is uh, actually going to hold up the acetate. It's going to hold up the strength of the card. So we want it to be really, really quite substantial. 
So just going to go in. And as I have been saying over the last week or so, when I've been showing you how I use my tacky glue and the small applicator, all that I am doing is sketching, sketching over the area. So I'm not necessarily going on to every single die cut piece. I am sketching. Of course, if you want to use your dotty tape runner, you can do, or your sprays. But this is what I do at home. When I'm prepping, making cards for family or friends, I will tend to use my tacky glue. And then do our drop shadow. So you can do it to the left, to the right, up, down. That's up to you. I'm doing it so that my white is to the left here. And then we can go in. We can then press. Just going to hold that for a moment or two. The glue gives us the opportunity to have a little bit of wiggle time. We can go in. And what you'll sometimes find is because of the die, because it's quite long, naturally fibres of your cardstock want to bend. So even if your layer is straight, sometimes you'll find because the actual fibres are bending, they're stretching, it then stretches the card. So all that I'm going to do is visually I'm going to use these pin prick dots as an aid and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line them up with my finger guard on my guillotine. I'm going to pop my cardstock in. I'm going to stretch and then cut. So this is going to give me back my straight edge. So we can do that one. And then what we can do is we can go in with our um, card blank that we've cut and I'm going to do exactly the same. Now as you'll see here, my top layer is a little bit too thicker than my white layer. But don't worry, we're going to do a drop shadow and then we can trim that off either with our scissors or with our guillotine. Um, scrap paper scissors, it must have warmed up a bit. Craig's taken off his lumberjack shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have been uh, warm all morning, but I, uh, I bought myself a few new bright shirts for Crafters TV and uh, a couple of them uh, arrived the other day, where that was when I had the fuchsia colour on, and then today a red one has arrived and this green one has arrived. So in actual fact, the reason I actually got changed was my shirt that I had on this morning, this, uh, in Wake Up Call, this morning I actually, um, what do you call it, the button, the button came off. Uh, so I was waxing my hair this morning in the bathroom. Oh, I wonder where we would go with uh, that. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then as I pulled my hand down, my hand got caught into my shirt and it ripped the button off. Oh, did she sew it back on for you? So Becky, um, Becky, who was in, she's uh, been filming a few bits and pieces in Studio 2 next door. So she very kindly sewed it back on for me. She's a good me. egg, isn't she? She is a good egg. But I did have to get changed because I was not sitting out there with no shirt on. Absolutely not. That is not um, something anyone wants to see. George, uh, the joystick is saying that she did it like in the speed of light. She did, yeah, because um, George was there having his lunch. I'd just finished my lunch and she was done. Huh? And it was by hand. It wasn't like a machine or that. It was by hand she'd done it. Amazing. Yeah. This is a good one. So, and I just thought, do you know what? I'm not going to change back. I just thought I'll put this new one on. So that's why I didn't purposely go out my way to get changed into my new shirt. But it just kind of happened because Becky was fixing my other one. But there we go. We've now got a drop shadow there. And then because we've got that overhang, all that I'm going to do is I'm going to go along with my scissors. Things like this is when I use my larger scissors. Usually for things, as you know, I use my small scissors. But this is going to give you a lot more accuracy. Accuracy is the word. So that's going to go top, that's going to go at the bottom, and then this is where we're going to start to sandwich our acetate in the middle. There is something there for those that are like, oh, he's just miming. I'm not, it's there. Taking a couple of pattern paper, this one, uh, from our pattern paper is actually from our vintage, but no, it's not. I took this one from a paper library. Oh, you'll this be seeing one. that a little later on. Carlo. You will Make be. Sure check that out. You adore that, Craig, don't you? The paper library. I absolutely adore 
that paper library. The, not just the papers that you get included, but the concept of it as well. I said in Wake Up Call, I'll say it again, I do have two of them. One of them I got from the team when we were launching the products here, and then I went and bought another one because one, I love the paper so much, and two, I just find that the uh, actual library itself, the holder, the file, is so, so handy whether you want to store more of your papers in there or if you just want to start to store some bills or letters or anything like that, you can do that because you've got that filing system. And you get the little tabs of cardstock as well so that you can then name and title each of the individual sections. So that one can go in there. So, yep, this one being the paper library. If you want to add extra sparkle of that or colour to it, by all means you can do and then I'm going to go in, and I think I forgot to take my backing off of this one because it just seems a little bit too cloudy, which I did. So our acetate, heavyweight acetate, the A5 that I used, what I had on yesterday, that does have a backing to it. So you're just going to peel it off. It's a protective backing, and then all that you need to do is start using it. So what we can do is I'm going to add some red liner tape to the top here, Joe. And then I'm going to add some red liner tape to the bottom here. And then we're going to sandwich it together. I'm going to go, as I've done before, this one is still a little bit squint. So all that I'm going to do is go back in. And I'm just going to neaten that up so it's nice and straight. Amazing. Um, Miriam says, oh, no, Craig, thankfully you had another shirt. Uh, just as well, well it did. wasn't it? In fact, on the show topless otherwise. Uh, Debbie says, good morning, boys. Good morning. Do you morning. store your little bottles of glue upside down? I do, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so it just means, obviously, if you store it the right way up, when you do come to use it, you have to wait and wait. Ah, uh, because it's quite thick. Because it's quite thick. Now, yes, if you fill it quite full, then it's not going to take long or just give it a shake. Uh, it'll come down quite quick. But I pop the pin in, and, then I, and even at home, I don't always pop the pin in. What I tend to do at home is, so baby wipe. This is what I do at home. I've got a little tub and I sit it like that. Perfect. So because the baby wipe is damp, that's going to stop Stops the glue it. from drying out. Perfect. And when it does start to dry out, all I do is I spritz it with water from a Spectrum Noir spritzer. So I'm never uh, wasting the baby wipe, and I just hold it that way. Stops it from drying out, and I can keep going straight on to using it. Sounds like a cocktail of Spectrum Noir spritz, doesn't it? Spe Spectrum Noir yeah, spritz, it does, spritz. doesn't it? Yeah, it's time for a Spectrum Noir spritz. If we, here's a question for you at home. If we were going to make a cocktail called a Spectrum Noir Spritz, what would be in it? Let me know in the comments. Mine would definitely be stro stropical. Stropka. Stropical. Sounds like you've been on the stropka already. Maybe it's time to stop go with a stropka. <laughs> tropical. I love my tropical, but not grapefruit. It's too bitter for me. Oh, no. Not grapefruit for me. I've no. got a bit of a sweet tooth in that regard. No, definitely not grapefruit. But, yeah, anything tropical. Love it. Oh, yes. What a drink that was. Umbongo. 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 Oh, you kids, you're too Sounds young. Sounds like a place, doesn't it, Umbongo? So it's tropical, it's tropical, yeah. Came uh, in a little me, carton. The, sorry? Came in a little carton. Did it? For me, it's the sort of obscure cans of um, soda or fizzy pop that you get at like takeaways and fish and chip shops that you never see anywhere else, like dandelion and burdock, for instance. You don't see that anywhere, but uh, fish and chip shops, you do. Fizzy juice, as I call it. A Rubicon being a Rubicom. another one. Vimto is another sort of random Vimto. one that you get at the, uh, at the fish and chip shop. I've got Vimto in the vending machine at the moment. What, what, a, what a time to be alive, Craig. What a time to be alive indeed. What a time. A Vimto uh, was invented in 1908 in Manchester by a guy called John Nicol Knowles on Granby Row. Really? Yep. Is there anything you don't know about Manchester? Not really. Not really. No, not surprised. Got your favourite, doing another tag, Joe. Whoa. Going in with the, the tag. The tag's available in the shop the day, remember? Where you get the tag, the punch. You also get, of course, the stamps that you need to, work to go with it. And you get the twine too. Get it all. Do quite. you get it all? So um, I've cut it to two inches by three and a quarter inches. Then what I've also done is I've gone in with my verse compendium. 
and I've stamped out one of my absolute favourite sayings that's come out of over the last couple of years. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. So that can then go onto our tag here. And then what we can do is we can come in and I'm going to attach this to my um, acetate using my double-sided tape. But what I'm also going to do, Joe, is if I pop that at an angle there, can you see how if I open it up? So that, that looks okay. That looks absolutely fine seeing the white. But you see how that doesn't really look overly nice? It's not exactly appealing, is it, onto the back? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. Let's cut another little piece. So what did I say that was? Two, two inches by three and a quarter. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide our workings here. So we're going to do that again. Let's take in our punch. So with it being the two inches, all that I'm going to do is slot it in to the two inch mark. And it can only go so far. Press it. So we've got the same size punch. And then on the back, let's go in with our tape. If we take this off now, now on the back of that acetate, we can come in and then we can overlap that so we don't see any of the workings. And then to finish off, let's go in with our glued gel. So I'm not adding any of the twine or that. I've tied a bow and adding the glue gel into there and then there we go there is our decorative top and bottom sandwiched with the acetate finished off with a little bit of uh, a bow from ribbon and that is from our uh, paper library amazing absolutely amazing yet yeah, another gorgeous card and it looks so different as the others that Craig has created in the show as well just goes to show you the versatility on these let me just again remind you what you're getting in the collection if you're just joining us you're going to receive the rose garden the flourishing foliage that's your butterflies your ditzy daisies one of your top favorites your dancing dragonflies and your wildflowers which is your other favorite also all of them uh, come your way 38 35 which is brilliant value with a 20 percent saving 47 75 if you are stateside and you can use your club is by discount of course as well uh the punch that craig just used that is available for you on the show it's great quality this punch and you'll know what i mean as soon as you get this home it's really nice and robust which is fantastic it cuts these for you these are the three different tag styles that you can create so you have got a 1.5 a two and a two and a half inch tag there which is awesome and you will also get the stamps included too and they say things like well it's the thought that counts or this is for you but I wish it was for me we also have I hate presents said no one ever the best gift ever I should know I bought it uh, warning the contents of this package may be awesome uh, this is exactly what you did not ask for and a special gift you never knew you needed. There you are. All of that as a Platinum member, 2616, 3744, which is brilliant considering you're getting the, ta the tag punch in there also. Now, we're going to have a little look ahead to some uh, a deal that we've got coming up for you later in our cartload show. So if you hit the shop the day, that's where you'll find all of the offers from launch day, but also all of the cartload offers also. But... It's at a best ever price, which we love. We love a bit of best ever pricing. Uh, and what you've got here are these amazing uh, ornate screens uh, coming for you. Let me just pop these legs around the right way. There you go. And let me show you what these do. They are amazing. They're a really fabulous concept that you've got just here. There's lots of different things you can do with them. The great thing is that what you're getting is you're getting all of the sort of mechanism to put these together but you're also getting uh, all of the decorative elements too, which is fantastic. You see a lovely wedding on there. If you've got a wedding to go to, these are gonna be fa fabulous. Uh, and I think they're a real keepsake, these. I think they're gonna be something that, you know, you're gonna give to people and they're gonna hang on to, you know what we were just saying about, you know, some people getting rid of projects that you make. I think people are really gonna hang on to these ones. Let me have a little word with that one in a minute. Um, it really is, these have all been stored flat, Craig, so I'm just having to pop their legs back in place. Okay. There we are. Uh, but how beautiful is that? Let me take you through then exactly what you're going to receive uh, in this particular collection. 
So there is a lot of metal for your money in here. It's at its best ever price as well, which is brilliant. So this one here, first up, these, this is your sort of main worker section of the die. So this is your ornate screen plus your rose panels and the trellis panels. I mean, I think if you just went for this item, you've got loads in here to be able to decorate these. And they are very simple put, to put together. We have a full launch day on these. We also have a craft along that's been completed on these too. You're saving almost 50 pounds, over $56, which is not to be sniffed at. And it is the best ever price. Then what you're getting is all of these. Now these are your stamps and dies that you're going to be able to use to beautifully decorate these uh, ornate screens. Or you could use these stamps and dies on their own. There's absolutely nothing to stop you doing that. Each one of these stamp collections also has sentiments in there too. So that's your hummingbird. That is your happily ever after. This here is your butterfly delight. And then you've also got treasured memories in there too. Great price there. Right. Oh, I nearly forgot, Craig, as well. Uh, you get the cardstock as well included, which is the, I believe it's the lavender that's included. It's lilac. Don't get your lilacs and your lavenders confused. Uh, you'll get 10 sheets of the lilac included in or there. Or as so the Americans say, lilac. Who says that? Lilac. The Americans. Lilac. Lilac. Is that how they say it? Yeah, The one lilac. for me that is aluminum. That and pastel. Pastel. I've started to say pastel. Do I don't know where it's crept in from, but yeah. It's pastel, obviously, in this country. Pastel. Um, anyway, let's throw it back to Craig and let's uh, get another demo. I don't know where the first out half of this show's gone, Craig. It's flying by. I know, isn't it? Really, really is flying by. So this one, what we're going to do is we're going to use a combination of the Spring Fever pattern paper and card lock. My original demo that I'd done with this one was with the butterflies. But seeing as I'd done them earlier on, what I'm going to do is I'm still going to do the same demo, but instead of using the butterflies, let's use the wildflowers because this one we're going to do at an angle so to show you that you can do them at different angles so i've got my card blank this one being seven by seven and once again like before what i'm going to do is a little bit of a helping aid i'm going to go from corner to corner with my ruler and i'm going to draw a light pencil line so that i have a rough guide as to where i am going and then when it comes to the dies, what you will see, so if I pop it on here, at the left and the right hand side of all the dies, just where my finger is, there's a little section where it just curves, curves out. That's actually where your die cut points end. So that gives you a good indication when it is the other way around, where your die starts and where it ends. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to line the left hand side up with my pencil line and same with the right hand side, line it up. If you want to be more exact where you want to then position it, then you can use a ruler and measure if you want. I'm not. I'm going to do it by eye and I'm going to take my low tack tape and this section here is what's going to be the waist. So let's put my low tack tape into place here come in with our large Gemini. So for this card here, with it being seven by seven, you will need your larger Gemini, or of course, a large die cutting machine. And you're going to get, even although the die is within the middle of your plate, you're going to get a nice even cut because the die is actually at an angle. So instead of it just being face on, it's at that angle. So you're going to get that nice build up of pressure from the rollers. But because it's a Gemini, let's go in with a pause and reverse. If you are new to us at Crafter's Companion or new to the Gemini, our Gemini was the very, very first die cutting machine out there to have the pause and reverse function. So many more have come along and replicated it, not because they just want a coffee, but they know how invaluable it is having that pause and reverse function. So that is what I've just done there. I'm going to take this out. I'm not too concerned about it taking a couple of layers of fibre off my card because we're going to cut that off in a moment. But let's just clean my die while I'm here. We're getting a few uh, suggestions in for our Spectrum Noir Spritz, Craig. Are we? Uh, definitely needs Prosecco in it, at least, has decided. I don't see why not. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Pammy not only has made the uh, suggestion, she's also quantified it, the recipe, for me as well. Here you go. Uh, 12 to 15 frozen raspberries, strawberries and blueberries, two ounces of vodka, an ounce of fresh lemon juice, one ounce of simple syrup and four ounces of Pinot Noir. Ooh, so it's wow. got vodka and red wine in it. Interesting combo. I don't think I've ever had a cocktail with red wine in it. 
The gallery are not sure, uh, is what they are saying. I mean, I'll try anything twice, Craig, so let's give it a go. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same. Although, in, in saying that, um, my, my palate quite isn't refined just yet for whiskey and that. I'm not, I'm not good with that. Are you that. a red wine and cola drinker, Craig? Sorry? Are you, am I thinking you're a red wine and cola drinker? Me a red wine and cola? Yeah. No. Not you. It's a thing. In Germany, it's no. a, I believe it's got an actual name. Uh, but I've seen, especially when I was in uh, the Balearics, I remember seeing uh, lots of German people. They would drink cola, uh, red wine. No. Red wine and cola is definitely a thing. Is it? The other thing I'm thinking about is half beer, half lager, half cola. No. It's uh, like something that's drunk in, oh, no. uh, in Germany, yeah. Of course, as we would say, you know, do drink responsibly. Yep. But I that. am, I knew you were away to say that, I, I am a uh, predictable. gin and lemonade gin kind of guy. Gin and lemonade, oh delicious. Yeah, I like my gin. Can't mm. go wrong with a cheeky little gin, that's how you Not at all, not at all. I do, uh, I do like that. Although I'm, I'm not um, a big drinker. I like my cup of tea. Love a cup I of tea. I like my, funny enough, my uh, cola drink, but just cola drink on its own. So yeah, I'm very easily pleased. I only really drink tea and water these days, you know. Nothing else. No. No. I mean, obviously, at the weekend, you know, Different after dark, story. I, I like a tipple, but um, yeah, like day to day, I only drink water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm not one to sit and for instance if i'm doing a facebook live you know i'm not one to sit and maybe have a, a beer or that i'll tend to have uh, a juice or a tea mm. or something like that i think the the um sort of lamb the what am i trying to say the benchmark for being an adult craig is having a drinks cabinet a drink or a shelf at home that has is full of spirits and i have one of those now and i don't even drink spirits no yeah i just feel like such an adult I've got my Durham gin, I've got, you know, the special vodkas, all the special spirits all laid out. Yeah. And they've even got, like, you know, the little pourers that you ha that they have, you know, the pourers that clip in the top, the stainless steel ones? Yeah. And they have those, and they have little double shot um, measures hung on top of them as well. It's very fancy. I mean, for something I don't even drink, I mean, it's quite a lot of effort, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's the benchmark of being an adult for me. Having alcohol in the, uh, in the house that you're not compelled to drink immediately. <laughs> I think that's about right, oh, you're not an you? adult, then. You're definitely an adult. Yes, yeah, so I had to have a sort out of, I was sorting out my cupboards last week, funny enough. You know my kitchen cupboards when you end up just dumping stuff in there. So it's like, got them sorted. But yeah, I get, I, get, I get what you mean though, I understand that. Yeah, because I mean, as you're growing up, when you, you know, as you, when you're in your, your 20s, let's say, at uh, firstly, you drink, al you buy alcohol to consume it, don't you? Yeah. You don't just true. have it in the house. And I feel like adults just have alcohol in the house so that they have no intention of drinking. You're right, you actually. I think I'm on yeah. my own there. No, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Here we go. So what I've done here is gone in with my mats and layers. So I've added in a piece of our white multi-purpose card here, but pattern paper and then some of the blue from the block. And then what I've done is I repeated that again and then I simply cut at an angle, but I've only used some of the pattern paper and the daisy pattern paper. That gives me a really good mat and layer for the corner. So we can press that one in. So we've got that lovely floral design here, the uh, wildflowers to be specific. Any tips for cutting mats and layers that are sort of shaped or angled like that, Craig? Um, yeah, just exactly what I explained there. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, just do the inside. Yeah. Cut it at an angle. Oh, so you just cut it. But say if it wasn't a, if it wasn't a equilateral triangle. Well, I wouldn't be doing it then. You just wouldn't bother? No. Okay, it's not, it's not no. easy to do? No, I would definitely uh, just Make sure it. it's point to point. Point to point, yeah. Fair enough. If you, if you were, and, you know, being flippant here and joking aside with your job, but yeah, if you were going to do them at an, uh, an awkward shaped triangle or something, use a, I would use a ruler. Okay, okay. Or what you can then do is 
cut a, a rectangle first so mm. it's going to fill the the width and then the height and then just start to cut it from there Do you see what see what i mean maybe like a yeah, little pencil line so start with a rectangle and then cut it at the angles that you want but for me if i'm ever doing it it's always a square and then just cut at an angle so it makes it a 90 degree angle fabulous and then what I'm going to do is these ones here, they've got a couple of little areas. You can pop little gems or that on. So I'm going to do exactly that. I know so many of you at home will already have gems and pearls, if not within your stash, but from your uh, craft kit stash. And then to finish off, from my sentiment stamp set, this one being the birthday, happy birthday set, I've gone in. I've just done them at little... Uh, little um, V's at the side here but if you wanted to use your punch and create a tag effect then of course you can do but let's go in I'm going to add these ones on with a little bit of height and bring this one in so we're going to put birthday down in the bottom left and then what we can do is we can come in with happy and we can put that at the top right and either come in with a white matting layer to write in the inside or of course you can do that on the opposite side and then what I'm going to do because I've got a few uh, pearls here what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to pop one here simply because that's only two and that's annoying on my eyes I like to do threes so if I put one there and then I'm going to do just a couple underneath so let's do one two three and that's all that we're going to do. Bring in some of my little gems. One, two, and then three. A little bit of decoration. A little bit of decoration. George of the Joy Six calling it. It says demo of the show. There we go. And then what you could do is, because your die is 6.2 inches, you could do this. If you don't want it to be as big, 7x7, seven seven, you could do this on a 6x6 six six card if you want to. No problem whatsoever. But then there we go. So simple matching layers for the centre. And then to create that 90 degree angle, replicate it the size of the inside and then just cut it at an angle. And then there we go. So just show my original one was with the butterflies. But then all that I've done, instead of doing the butterflies, we've gone in with the wildflower. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, really gorgeous. Just if you're ready to get your hands on these, if, you, it's, ooh, if you've made your mind up, well, I'm there. Uh, then I'll just recap exactly what's in here for you. So delicate and dainty, all of these. And they are a style of uh, dye that we know you guys absolutely love. You've got your rose garden, your flourishing foliage, your butterflies. Uh, this is your ditzy daisy. Then we also have the dancing dragonflies and the wildflowers. 38, 35, 47, 75 gets you all of them, which is rather marvellous. Uh, right, up next, I want to remind you of that amazing Snow White collection uh, that we have from Century of Pearl. If you've not used Century of Pearl in your crafting yet, oh my, you really are missing out because it is true luxury card stock 310 GSM. It's got the most amazing pearl essences to it, as you can see. Uh, just there, it really is sensational. Uh, so you've got that one just there, that is your snow white hint of silver. And then we also have the snow white hint of gold. You're gonna get 50 sheets of each in this particular collection. And it's just very subtle, that gold, that gold that's in there. It's a real hint of in the back, which is brilliant. But I think it's whether you wanna use it with warmer, would you say it's whether you're using it with warmer tones or cooler tones, Craig? So uh, warmer tones, you'd go for the gold, cooler tones, you'd go for the silver. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. Snap that up, 19 pounds or $28, which is brilliant. Uh, Definitely cool tones with the silver. Yeah, cool with the silver, warm with the gold. There yes. we are. Uh, something else I want to tell you about, another brilliant deal coming up in our later cartload show. You guys are really shop, shop, shopping on that particular cartload show. Uh, you get your alphabets. I'm not going to take you through. You know the alphabet. I do, just someone was surprised that I knew the alphabet earlier. Thought, how rude. Uh, so you're going to get all of your letters. And you are going to get your ampersand. And you're going to get your numbers. And do you know what else you're going to get? A whacking great 70% off. Wow. I know. 
Jeezy Peeps. Jeezy Peeps. Uh, 19, 20, 30, 40. If you're a platinum member, you'll find that along with all of the other cartload deals in Shop the Day. So make sure you pop over there. There's loads of you over there at the moment with very, very full baskets. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to check out. Whilst you do that, here's one of our fabulous quick buys. Quick buy. All your crafty must-haves in a flash. Put away your tape measure and fabric scissors. The Threaders Fabric Cutter offers accuracy and precision with every cut. This handy tool slices through fabric in a guillotine style. Its ergonomic design features a comfortable and protective handle, so it's safe and easy to use whether you're right or left-handed. Its 45 millimeter rotary blade will cut up to six layers of fabric at a time, so your sewing, quilting, and upholstery project times are cut down to size. It's equipped with a measuring guide in metric and imperial for a perfectly accurate cut every time. The built-in grid ruler has 30 degree, 45 degree, and 60 degree angle lines, so you can cut fabric on any angle, including the bias. Quick buy, all your crafty must-haves in a flash. had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our Gold and Platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new Express three to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Very, very busy. Lots of you taking the opportunity to check out there. I'll just quickly recap before we get back into another demo uh, on these border dies. You've got the uh, Rose Garden, which is this one here. Very, very delicate for this particular. They almost look a bit like iced roses. You know, you see yeah. like from yeah. frosting, really cool. Flourishing foliage, butterflies. Ditsy Daisy, this is your dancing dragonflies, and you'll also get the wild flowers as well. 3068 or 3820 if you're a platinum member, you can get any two of these for 14 pounds or 18 dollars. But pretty much everyone, oh look, left me punch. Uh, everyone pretty much going for that whole collection, which is awesome. What's next, Craig? Sorry, just are you having a bit? Are you having got your sippy cup there? Were you <laughs> just, just having a little drink there? It is what it's flavoured water. Is it actually. juice? It's uh, yeah. Well, it's flavoured water. Flavoured. What flavour is it? Strawberry flavoured water. Strawberry. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to. The taste um, of summer. Yeah, you know, I do, I do like my diluting juice or squash, um, but yeah, trying to. Um, I I know we have this discussion. You know, I'm not a big fan of water because um, I don't like the taste of it, and you say, well, water's got no taste, taste and it's like, yeah, but I just don't like the taste of nothing. I, I like never something. used to like water growing up. Yeah. I've had to learn to love it, Craig, like a lot of things in my life. Mm-hmm. At least water. It's water, but a little bit of flavour in Are it. Are you weaning yourself? Am I? Are you weaning yourself? As in, like, is that where we're going? We've gone from diluting juice, now we're, like, flavoured water, and then we're going to go on to water. Is, that, is it a journey that you're taking us on? A what? Are you... <laughs> Face! Are you weaning yourself off the juice? Oh, okay, wean it, okay. What do okay. you think I said? Well, drinking a lot and... Oh, like are you weaning? weaning. <laughs> <laughs> no, is it are you weaning yourself off of the juice? Are you trying to get yourself onto water? Well, it's kind of a yes to both of them, really. Right, drinking yes a lot yes. more water, but yeah. I'm wonderful. I was like, yeah, okay, yes. Are you <laughs> weaning yourself? <laughs> I just oh thought what you thought I meant then. Uh, yeah, now no, it's clicked. Now it's clicked. Uh, but yes, yes to both. So what I want to do is um, we are just trying to judge the time. So I want to end with that really, really lovely box where you can use the dies 
on the edge of the lid. So I thought what we'll do is this one is not too long a demo and this is where you can start to have some fun. Use it as a wrap for scrolls or maybe your napkins if you want to. And by able to do that, because as you can see, it's thicker. So if you want to make them thicker, what I'm going to do is I'm using the flourishing foliage with this one. I've taken a piece of ivory card, three and a half by six and three quarters. And once again, I've done a pencil line down the side, uh, down the side, down the centre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my die and I'm going to use my tape to then tape it into place. So we're going to add this one on here. And what's good with these ones, if you wanted to have the die, die cut in the same direction, then what you would do is, where I die cut on the left hand side, you could flip your cardstock over, cut from the opposite side, so it's going to have that die design going in the same direction. But with a lot of them, and certainly with this one here, it's nice if you've got one going one direction and one going the opposite direction. Okay, no. And that's how this one works a treat. So what I'm going to do is I can take that off, take that off, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then snip up to that die cut line and snip down to that die cut line. So now, now that we've got that one cut, if I take out all that waste, so if I wanted my die to go in that same direction, what I would do is I would then cut from the opposite side. But I don't want that. I want it to be nice and have that professional cut on both sides. And what I mean by that is the opposite side here, you don't get quite a real sharp cut. It right. cuts, but you've not got that roundness to it like you will have on this side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my die in once again and I'm going to do exactly what I've done before on the opposite side, and I'm going to match it up so it's parallel to the left-hand side. We can then go in with our tape here. We can cut our die out by running it through, and with this one is another one that would go through your smaller machines. So it's thinking now, your border dies, where else can you use them? So if you're having, you know, a treasure hunt uh, themed party or that with the kids start to make your own little wraps to go around maybe some of the scrolls or something that you're doing or the maps or if you're wanting to then theme your napkin rings you know mm. maybe you've got some maybe you've not got any maybe you want to make your own you can start to make your own with these ones here in whichever color card texture card that you want so we can then take this one away and then snip upwards here and then we can then snip downwards here. So we've now got our die on the opposite side. And oh, see I what I that. mean? See how this one's going what, uh, so that way. That one's going up and that one's coming down. It's really so you've cool. got that nice flow to it. And then what I'm going to do here, of course, you could come along with your eraser and take out the pencil line. I won't for the sake of this uh, speed. But what I'm then going to do, just to create a little bit extra strength along that centre, on the opposite side, what I've done is I've taken a piece, it's kind of like a, a peachy cardstock, and I've cut it so that the width of it is actually going to cover the little pin prick holes. So therefore, what you're going to do is you're going to get a little bit of the peachy colour just popping through. Oh, peachy. Peachy. A little bit of a peachy colour. So I'm going to go in with my tacky glue, and then I'm going to go all the way up, and as you can see, I've made it extra long because we're going to come along and we're going to snip off the end. So press that into place. So that's going to create a little bit extra substance right along the middle. So it's not going to then um, sort of kind of fall into place because we're going to actually curve it around. We're going to wrap it on itself. So we can snip that off. So we've now got that extra strength in the middle. We've got the little pinprick details that run through the centre. And then all that I'm going to do is with my fingers, or you can do it with something that's round, start to manipulate. I would leave it just a couple of minutes to let that tacky glue set, but that we don't have a lot of time. So what we're going to go is we're going to then go in, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then start to wrap these little tabs together. Anything to stop us double cutting a long one of these? If we wanted it for something else, I'm thinking around a vase or something like that, Craig. 
Could we cut one and then another one together so we could. join them up to get double the length? So, yeah, of course you could. So what you could then do is have your cardstock that's even longer and then die cut one edge and then just move your die over and then, you know, you could keep going. If it's A3 cardstock, you could mm. do a great big long strip. So, yeah, if you want to do it round the vase or that, uh, if you want to pop this onto the back of your double-sided adhesive sheets, Perfect. first of all, then cut a few of them just join because wherever your die cut edge ends that's where your die is going to start the next time so yeah you can absolutely nice. do that so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to wrap it around now i could do it really really close so that my design my die cut meets but what i want is i actually want to play on having this this open space here because that could be where your napkin's going to be something like that so what i'm going to do so let's pop in our tacky glue, fold that in on itself. And then you're not going to see this join because I, uh, on purpose, want that to be at the front so we right. can hide it. So I can grab that one on. And then what I'm going to do, I should actually pop my hot glue gun on, but never mind. Press that in so that's nice and strong. I'm going to bring in some of that twine. So you've maybe got the, the punch. And you've got your twine within that one there. Let's use our red liner tape just so it's going to hold it strong. So let's go in. I'm going to add a little bit into the center there. And this is going to grip our twine. And then what I want to do is I don't necessarily want to see any loose edges. So I'm going to start. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap, Joe. N not a specific way. You're going just, to wrap for us. Just, I'm going Can to wrap for you. Spit some bars for you. Give you a beat. Going to wrap for you. No. Okay. no. Oh, oh, I see. So we're going to wrap, and I can then once that's stuck into place, we can then go in and take that excess off, and then I'm going to kind of position it, spread it out, because I do want to see a little bit of those pin prick details and then press that in so it's really really strong and then what we can do is I went in with our vintage diary and gone in with our wax seal go in now with a piece of our um, glue gel so if we then pop that one there that's then going to hide the workings although the twine's kind of already done that and then what we could do is let's let's just take you're going to you might have fancy napkins you might not you might use kitchen roll but you can then roll your napkin up if you wanted to then you can pop that in so if we then bring that oh, in fancy. let your napkin open up of course you could add some color to it you could spritz it if you want to but then if you're going on to a, maybe a really fancy picnic, maybe it's a first date or something that you want to then open it up. Like picnic, but make it royal family. Yeah. Jubilee picnic. Oh, Why not? I love the idea of a jubilee picnic. But then there we go. So you can start to use them for your wraps, for your napkin wraps, or if you're wanting to go in, if your little scroll or something like that. So have fun. Please don't just think of them as only being able to use on your cards or the edges of your concept cards. You can have some fun in what you're going to do with them. Amazing. Absolutely brilliant. You can do that, of course, with any of these different designs that you are getting included. Let me take you through them then. You're going to get Rose Garden, Flourishing Foliage, Butterflies, Ditsy Daisy, we also have the dancing dragonflies and the wildflowers. The wildflowers and the ditzy daisies are your two favourites at the moment. So far and away the busiest option of getting these is going for that big collection. 38, 35, 47, 75, saving you 20%, which is brilliant. Um, Carol says, OK, coffee coming out of nose. You two kill me. We try to. We do our best. Uh, loving the one with the leaves, says Mary Rhino. Patty agrees with you about water, Craig. She says, depend, uh, water can taste depending where your water comes from. I'll drink filter tap water at home where our daughter and my mum live. The tap water is awful. It even makes the coffee taste bad. Doesn't sound nice, does okay. it? Okay. Depends on where you are in the world. It, the, I, I don't know if the water's good or bad here. I haven't decided, Craig. You haven't we decided. Have filtered, we have mineral water here, don't we? Or spring water. 
The, f the further north, the fresher the water. We have are. really fresh water you in do. Scotland. You do. I must admit, I live in Manchester. The water's okay. Well, actually, I think it's quite nice. I went down to Kent, Craig. Oh, not good at all. Even makes you even makes your kettle go all scaly. Yeah. Not, not nice, good. is it? Not good at all. Uh, right, any questions you've got, keep getting them into me. Remember, this is not the only show today. You've got that incredible cartload coming up later, 6 p.m. here in the UK. That's 1 p.m. on the East Coast, 10 a.m. on the West Coast, which is amazing. So make sure you join us for that a little later. And then a whole day, my last day uh, tomorrow for, uh, I've got five days off after tomorrow, so make sure you join wow. me tomorrow. Yeah, I've got an extra day off on Saturday, obviously, for obvious reasons, Craig, it being oh, yes. Eurovision. Uh, of course I took the day off of Eurovision. <laughs> Aaron's asked me, you taken the day off of Eurovision? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it starts at eight. I'd never got home in time. So, uh, yeah, I've actually taken the whole day off, uh, which is amazing. Uh, I will, I'll be having nibbles, indeed. They may be uh, Italian-themed, as it's in Italy this year, in Torino. Um, got, oh, fiends, yeah. I've even bought a special disco ball helmet to wear for the occasion, which is rather fabulous. Wow. Which I was meant to bring into... Oh, I've... Oh, look at that. That's not good. <laughs> oh, the wind blows. I'll stay like that, won't well, I? Me. Well, let's I just, go back well, to I just Craig. start the demo then. Well, let's yeah. do it. Let's look do it. Look at that. I want to kind of want to see it. Oh, it's gone now. Thank the... Uh, what? Yeah, Praise Celine. It's gone. Is that... It's gone. It's gone. So what we're going to do now is let's show you... They thought I was pranking them. You know, sometimes when I talk, but it's like my microphone's gone. Yes. They were like, why is he not moving? No pranking going on, you're absolutely, we're actually freezing there, so yeah. So what we're going to do with this one here is we're going to make this really lovely, substantial box. Now, you can, if you've got the uh, Pro, then do it all in a one r but many of you don't have the Pro. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it in sections. So let's just get my lid back on, so popping it on. We're going to use the Dragonfly collection uh, for the collection. I've got Dragonfly collection on the brain. We're going to use the Dragonfly border here. So what I've done, very similar actually to my last demo to start with, piece of multi-purpose card, three inches by six and a half. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to go in with my Dragonfly die. And I'm going to go up to my center point because I've gone in with the center and I have popped a pencil line. And unlike before, what I'm not going to be doing, let me turn it that way so it's easier. I know this might sound daft, but visually from what I'm away to show you next, it's easier. So unlike my last demo, we're not going to cut this side, but we are going to create a little tab. So what we can then do is pop this one onto our cutting plate and we're going to cut this one. So what I'm doing here, Joe, I would do another three times. I've already got my other three all good to go, but this is just letting you see what I need to do, because on this layer here, we're going to create two little tabs so that we can start to assemble our box lid, basically. It's all done in sections. So if we take this one out, and we can then remove our die. So I'm going to take this one, so Will this be the fastest box ever made? It may very well be. May very well be. So what I'm going to do now is, now that we've got that one, we're going to go in with our scoreboard. So I'm going to take my scoreboard. I'm then going to come along and I'm going to score at, I just want to check where I scored on my original one. So yeah, a quarter of an inch. So we're going to score at quarter of an inch. And then what I'm going to do is score at quarter of an inch. So we can then take our red liner tape. So we're going to fold that back. We're going to fold that back. And then at this bit here, what we're going to do is we're going to cut at an angle and cut at an angle. Bring in our tape. So the red liner tape is going to be your best friend for this one. We can then come in with our next one here and we're going to add our tape. You could, if you want, use your tacky glue, which I know I usually do, but because this is quite a substantial box and it's in sections, I am going to use my red liner tape. So we've now got one, two, 
two, three, four. All exactly the same. So we've got all four of them here. Another piece of our multi-purpose cardstock, six and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then what I'm going to do, Joe, is I'm going to go section by section. So up to my score line, what we can then do is let's just fold that over. So up to my score line, we're going to go in with one of them here and then press. And then we're going to go in with our next one. And I'm going to do two to start with before I go in with my corner join. So we're going to pop that one on and pop that one on. We're going to then come in with our next one. This is a sort of different way to usual, is it, Craig, to making our boxes? Uh, for this size, yeah, because yeah. this size you can't do unless you've got the pro. Right. So this, that's why I was saying that um, this is it, why it's in sections. Right. So if you've got the pro, you can do this, but if you don't right. have the pro, you, you need to do it in sections. Hence why I want it. I was really keen to try and get this one in so that you could see that even with really dainty small border dies, you can still create really substantial boxes. You've got to finish one of these already, Craig. I do, yeah. Did you want to do, did you want to do the card of the show earlier? If you want. If you want. If I just show you, I'll just join. Because Craig's already got to finish one there. Corner. In corner. So what we can then do is corner to corner to join in them. And then it's always a good idea to do your top layers first and then go in corner to corner. Work your next one in, corner to corner. And then there is at least our lid. So you can see your lid from up above and we've got the dragonflies all the way around. So that's that one. And then what I've done is I've taken another piece of my multi-purpose cardstock. I've cut it to four and a quarter, uh, four and three quarters by six and a half, four and three quarters, six and a half. I've scored at a quarter in and a quarter in and done the same, created my little tab that we can see here. So what I'm then going to do is take that off. I've got another piece, multi-purpose card, six and a quarter. So we're going to go in and we're going to add that one to the side. And this step here is very, very similar, if not exactly the same as the lid. But instead of the decoration die cut, these are just flat panels. So we work our way round. And I won't lie to you, this took quite a while to work out how we could make a really big, deep box without having the Pro. So I'm glad I managed to work it out. But we can go in here and we can press that one in. And then all that we're going to do is work our way around, take each of these off. You might want to take one strand off at a time. I know when Leanne does anything to do with construction, uh, if it's memory books or anything like that, she tends to just like to take the one section at a time. I don't mind, I'm quite comfortable taking them all off at first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to join them as if they were a box and it's been made in the way that we tend to do. So we can work our way in. So we can pop that one on. So I think what we can do, Joe, is once I've showed you how you can construct it, I won't decorate it with the pattern papers. I can do that a later date, but at least this has shown you how you can then construct it. So we'll work our way around. I'm just That's putting a really that cool little, little box style. Well, pressure. not a little box. It's a whacking great box, but you get the, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I do. And then all that we're going to do is, of course, you're going to be careful because you've got these dainty die cuts, but you could back them with your acetate if you want to. Nice idea. And then there we go. That's cool. We that love that. is the basis of your box. So as you can see, I do have my bits where I would decorate it, but all that you're going to do, spring fever, paper pad, of course, you're going to go in and do your mats and layers. So that is how you're going to create the base as well as the lid without the pro, but using your really, really dainty 
border dies, timeless border dies, that one being the dragonfly. So can you imagine that being decorated with the nature garden, uh, not nature garden, Sarah's signature um, dragonfly collection? Absolutely beautiful, it really is. Just shall we do a card of the show, Craig? Barbara says, Joe, can you say hi to Amanda for me? Hi, Amanda. Uh, she's watching, first ever time. First time viewer. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Uh, Crafty Woman 6 says that is so pretty. Crafty Woman 6 also says so many good techniques on the show today. There has been, isn't there? We always aim to, you know, impart some crafty knowledge on you, which I'm sure Craig has managed to do in bounds today as well. But anyway, let's do cra card, even, of the show. Card of the show. But yeah, with them being border dies, I could have just done all simple edgeable cards which I didn't want to do I wanted to do a selection of different ones so I think that's what we've managed to cover so we've got one two three four five six to choose from so we've gone in with the butterfly so number one oh, our acetate has fallen off onto my glass mat so number one number two number three number four number five or number six. There you are. The choice is yours. The choice is yours, indeed. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion on YouTube, if you want to cast your vote. Let me take you back through what's in this brand new launch then. Brand, first time you've had your chance to get your hands on them here at Crafters TV, you've got the Rose Garden. You also have the Flourishing Foliage. This one here is the Butterflies. You've got the Dancing Dragonflies. Here's your Ditsy Daisies and also your wildflowers to snap them up before they are gone. I think they are brilliant value, considering you're getting six edibles in there. When you think about edibles, they are such a versatile uh, dye. They can do so many different concepts, which is awesome. Right, lots of you have been having a good old rummage in that cartload show for later. Uh, lots of you stocking up already. Let me take you through another one of our brilliant deals that we've got. You are saving what double what you're spending here on this particular selection of dyes. I think they are awesome. You've got your butterfly silhouette, which is this one just here. And this is what it's going to create for you. That's what it builds and layers up to. And then you've also got your deer silhouette, which are these ones here. Like that you've got the um, sentiments in there and the embellishments too. Uh, you've also got the rabbit. Something about the, with this, I want to say like the rabbit in the moon. Mm -hmm. That's what the, uh, you know, the, the other pubs that don't play any musics. Yeah, yeah. Musics? What's musics? But you know the pubs that don't play any music? Mm -hmm. The biggest one in Manchester is called the rabbit in the moon. Is I think it? that's why I um, think of it when I look at, at that. Um, and you will also get the bee also, which has got that sort of honeycomb, hexagonal theme to it, which is, hex yeah, hexagonal, that's a, right, that's a word, isn't it? Feel to it. Saving you 36, 38 or 4186. Uh, we want to remind you about the dragonflies, uh, another recent launch for you. Uh, that was, uh, is, is this in the shop the day today, Erin? It is in the shop the day, brilliant. So if you want to find it, you can go over there. You have got uh, a really comprehensive collection. In fact, I'll share with you uh, exactly what you are getting in this particular one. So let me just have a little look, see at these for you. You are going to get the paper pads in here, which is glorious. So you can see here, your 12 by 12 papers and they really are stunning let me take you through a few of these just to give you an idea of the sort of overall look and feel uh, of the collection you've got 36 sheets double-sided love that you've got beautiful backgrounds uh, on here too as well with things like scrolls and loads of interest in each and every one of those sheets you do get it in the 12 by tw uh, 6, 12 by 12 and the 6 by 6 as well there then you've got your vellums. Now the vellums are beautiful. You've got really good heavyweight vellum on here. Really lovely opacity to it. And you've got designs that will again mix the main uh, 12 by 12 paper pad, which is fabulous. That you get 24 sheets there. This is new, the new sort of resist pads that we've bought you, whereby you can take the designs and you can add colors to them. So you choose which color you'd like that resist to appear in. And you've got the option to do whatever you want with them. 24 of those. And then you've also got your luxury cardstock, and you will get your 24 very similar 
in colours to the masquerade collection, as I said earlier. So you could actually, if you if you can't get the masquerade papers, especially the luxury card, you could actually come in and get this on its own individually and use it with your masquerade. Would be a really great way to go, wouldn't it? Uh, the fancy film. This is limited stock, so therefore I guess that means the collection is limited. We'd only have uh, what less than a hundred of these now to go around. So that means. But of this main collection, limited stock, we only have less than 100, because as soon as this sells out, it will break that bundle. Let me also share with you, you're going to get the meters. You get six one-meter lengths of this. You are then getting the um, charms. You've got your bridge as well, your ornate bridge. I love that it makes a little um, sort of, you can make a little card blank with that, which I think is really cute. Then we have your water lily border. Really nice. Nice that you've got liftable elements in here, which is not something we often see on an edgeable. Die-cut sentiments. Nice to have die-cut sentiments of this size. This one here is your water lily frame. Then you also have your dainty dragonfly. Your embossing folder in here is your lily pond. Then you've also got your sentiments too. And the sentiments are really lovely. Uh, you've got, thank you for your kindness. Have faith. Hope your day is perfect. And... Maybe your day is perfect. Uh, and then you've got these, which is your creator card and stencil duo, which is brilliant. So designed for you to uh, overlay this element, and then you can start to stencil some detailing in the back of there, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, then you've also got these, which are your water lily. Really beautiful stamps and dyes. You're going to absolutely love getting your colouring mediums in there. There is another collection as well. So $119.99, $155.99. This one is also limited stock because it has that fancy film in there as well. $153.99 or $199.95. That gives you the extra, an extra one of the A4 Luxury, the foiled card, and also the 12-inch paper pads. You'll receive two of those, which is brilliant. Uh, and of course, uh, in Platinum members are going to get uh, free shipping and handling in the US there, and also free post and packaging if you are here in the UK. Demo the show. Not what I thought it was going to be, Craig. No. I'm, building I'm building suspense, so I can tell. Uh, it's number three. Number three, the acetate. Mm. Demo the show, number three. Number three. Surprise, Craig. I actually thought the dragonfly box was going to do it. Me too. I actually thought the dragonfly box. Sorry, I'm just put just put hand cream on my hands here when you oh, were talking to me. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. There, so potentially, could this one break the dragonfly demo of the day? Mm. Um, I think we do have a dragonfly demo from earlier, don't we? Yeah. I think we're going to go. I think we're going to dragonfly again today. I've got four up here already, which doesn't make sense. So launch day Monday, the fish. Fish has got another uh, two for Monday. What's that all about? Whoa! Oh. I don't think that sounds fair, do you? Not sure you can have two in for the day. I don't know. How can you get know. two in? Yeah. I think we need to have a steward's inquiry there, Craig. Yeah. So these are the ones we have so far. That's from the launch day. Beautiful. I mean, I think this TP is going to take some beating, Craig. Mm -hmm. Although it could be disqualified, seeing as it's uh, you know, an unruly entry. Uh, then we also have uh, yours from yesterday, Craig, which is this one just here. Oh, I think you might be in the lead. Uh, and then we also... Have I shown you that one? No. Corinne's from Tuesday. Uh, another gorgeous one. So there we are. It's all to play for. The vote will not happen until Sunday. You are just getting a sneak peek of all of the action. Right, Craig, we're nearly out of time. Um, what can we? What are you excited for in that later cartload show? Uh, paper library. Paper yeah, library. I knew it. Absolutely, got the paper library. Uh, as you showed as well, Joe, the mm. animal silhouette. I've always adored them. Once we did do a demo, full on with the Gildan Flakes and Wake Up Call. You can go back and have a look as well. Uh, something that's not really been seen a lot here in the UK, and that's the treasure boxes. I know you guys are already loving it already. Check that out as well. What I would say is take the opportunity over the next couple of hours and really do now shop ahead on the website. Go onto the website, have a look at Cartload and all of these incredible deals that we've got.
Mm, make sure you go and check this out. Don't forget to check out your baskets as well. On that note, pleasure, Craig, as always, as to always spend is, um, yes. a few hours with you in the craft room. We don't have uh, long to wait until we We're get done. to do it all again. Because 6 p.m. here in the UK, 1 o'clock on the East Coast, 10 a.m. over on the West Coast. That is when you will find us back here in the studio. Myself and Cartload Craig bring you an incredible Cartload. We will see you there. Toodles. Ciao.